Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I will explain how to model dynamic fracture using the face field method in Abacus. We will use the well known specimen when a stress, attraction stress, is applied on both the top and the bottom surface. We will include uh, mass densities. Therefore, when we develop our model, we will use the standard international. Uh, units, that's meters, newtons, kilograms, and, and joule for the energy. But let's start. After opening the graphical user interface of Abacus, create a standard exploitative model. Make sure that the work directory is set correctly where all the files are from the site. Let's start by creating a part, which is going to be a 2D planar part. Set the approximate size to 0.5, continue. We will create this part using coordinates. We will create a crack which is going to be included in the geometry itself. The right corner is 50 e minus 3, 20 e minus 3. And we will finish the contour at the crack tip. Let's create this part and let's save our model. Let's name it dynamic. Next step, let's go to the property module. Let's create the U material. We will ask for 24 solution dependent variables a very small density to avoid instabilities and the user material which will have almost no stiffness which is only there just to be able to post process to visualize the results in abacus let's create a section make sure that the predefined material is selected and let's assign this section to our part let's name this set uel plate the uel letters will tell the matlab script that this set should be converted into the actual uel itself click done make sure the section is selected Click OK. Let's move to the assembly. Create the instance. Click OK. Here we need to create two surfaces. The top surface and the bottom surface. We will use these predefined surfaces to apply the actual traction. In the step module, let's create a dynamic implicit step with a maximum time period of 10 e minus 4 a fixed time increment of 1000 steps which will result in a 1 e minus 7 uh, time step time step size on the other tab we can specify the damping coefficient for the time integration algorithm however in this case we will leave it on the default value which is minus 0 0.05 let's modify the the field output we will ask the displacements the velocities the acceleration and the strains 
we will ask these variables in every 10 increment. Let's click OK, dismiss this window, and let's move on to the loading. Let's create a pressure on the top surface. Continue, we will use a predefined surface. Make sure that this is a negative value, minus one times power six. Okay, let's create another one on the bottom surface. Pressure bottom minus one e six. This corresponds to one megapascal, which is ten on the power six newton per square meter. Click OK and move on to the mesh. Let's switch to part. We will create a mesh seed with a size of two millimeters. Click OK. Let's modify the mesh control to a quad dominant mesh control with medial axis. Click OK and let's generate the mesh. Now we can move on to the job module. Do not forget to save the model. Let's create a new job with the name of dynamic. Continue, click OK, and in the job manager, you can ask the software to write the input file. Now you can open a MATLAB window. Let's open the test script, which is included on the pack in the package from the website. Here, there are a few comments which uses the conversion script. For the conversion script, we need to add two inputs. The first is the name of the input script created in Abacus. Make sure that you are in the same directory where the input script is. Make sure that you have the Fortran script with the, the MATLAB script. First, we have to define the elastic properties. First, the Young modulus, then the Poisson's ratio. The next three numbers are for the ductile, for the plastic material model, which we will not use now. Then we have the thickness of the, the elements, the density of the material, then fracture properties, the internal length scale, and the critical surface energy. And finally, we'll finish with three switch variables. The first one will control if the algorithm uses the, the anisotropic energy degradation function. So if it wants to do, distinguish between compression and, and tension energies, the second switch variable is the plastic switch. Now we will use zero. We do not want to use any plastic materials in this case. And the third one adds an elastic threshold, which will make sure that the material doesn't start to, to, to be damaged in the first initial stage when the stress wave actually propagates in it. Now run the script. We have created the, the input file for uh, Abacus which we can now return to the graphical user interface and run it. Back in Abacus, create a new job based on the, an input file. Let's select the newly generated input file. Click Continue in the General tab. Search for the user subroutine, which will either be uh, .f for Linux and Mac users or that F or R uh, for Windows users. Let's click OK. Let's finish and let's start running this script. We can monitor the, the status of this script, of the actual simulation, like this. After a few minutes, the simulation is finished. Let's dismiss this window and look at the result. To clean the results, let's select 
all the UMAP elements and let's display the 24th solution dependent variable which is the actual face field itself we can see that after the stress wave hits the, the crack tip, the crack starts to propagate and when it reaches a critical value, it, it branches. To quickly sum up, we have created a phase field model which takes into account the mass density of the material and simulates the dynamic factor initiation, propagation and branching. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.